My name is Bob the Drag Queen. And I'm Monet Exchange. And this is Sibling, Sibling Rivalry. I feel like I'm Alaska. Why do you feel like Alaska? Is Chaser. Why? I just want to talk like her. Do you, do, you, do you listen to their podcast? I have not. Do you? Yes. I don't. You got me. I've never listened to uh, Race Chaser, and I've never listened to Whimsically Volatile. But I, I will listen. listen. You did tell me to listen to Whimsically Volatile. I started to. But that's Her not first the, episode. The same as Never. I said I, I didn't. I never used the word Never. I said uh, I don't listen to got it. Got it. Uh, we got to listen to them, and I'm currently on tour with Willem and the Haters Rose, and we we're talking about that we should do a crossover episode. You listen to every Race Chaser? Not every one. I listen to a lot of them. Like three? I listen to probably about seven of them. Work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> you did it today. <laughs> you took an estrogen. Um, we are in uh... my apartment. <laughs> um, we're in YouTube studios. We're in my apartment, Bob. Stop being Monet shady. lives in YouTube studios. Um... <laughs> And actually, it, I feel like we're like we have a, like a radio show. <laughs> you hear that? It's serious. Get it together. Get with the motherfucking show. Yeah, we serious, serious. <laughs> uh, no, Do you goes, think Siri comes from serious? No, I. Well, serious comes from like uh, the moon or a, a wolf or something like that. And then, right? Uh, I, I don't think up? Apple just. Uh, you, Siri is such a random. No, wow, serious. I'm, I'm talking saying, about serious. I, th- I think. Apple got Siri from Sirius. It probably stands for something like like uh, system interpersonal relations inter- interception. Interpreter. So Sirius, um, Sirius pronounced Sirius uh, is the brightest star in the constellation Canis Major. Moons. I said moons. Oh, what, at, what does an apple do? And what is C- no? We, we, you asked if Siri comes Came from, from Sirius. Sirius, and I said I think Sirius comes from the moons. I said a wolf, but I said moons too. And then we mentioned uh, Siri. Siri. I think it stands for something. System integration relationship interpersonality. There you go. I think Siri is some intern who works at Siri. Some bitch. I work at Siri. I work at Apple. My name's Siri. Siri. You know, Tom from Facebook was not really the owner Black. of Facebook. Oh, really? He was just an intern. It was that picture of that guy. The boy. That was just literally just some intern. Not Facebook. MySpace. He was just some intern at MySpace. Oh, that, all right. We, we, yeah, we, well, we all knew that. I didn't know that. Did everyone in this room know that? Okay, you saw. Y'all can't see everyone shaking their heads, but that was a lot no, of. Uh, no one shook their head. I won that challenge. Another anything you can do. Um, Mini challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to get a tattoo. A new tattoo. As you know, I have like I have a couple tattoos. I have Not that many. Like what? Five. I have the one on my wrist. This one. I have this one here, which this, I got. This, this is my first tattoo ever. The base club. Ba- that. Uh, oh my god! You a ba- look at. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> You could you know what a bass club? Oh my god! And when I was like, you know the word music, <laughs> <laughs> and I have one down my back, which you were there for, and oh now so so you have three. I have three work. So now I want to do this one. This one's gonna be very big. So you know how Rihanna has the, the like the stars like going down her like that. Did not little, know that. Like, it's just, it looks like a little like constellation, like like a little trail of like a, a bunch of stars. I want to get the same thing starting here on my index finger, going up a trail. With you my, want a tattoo in your hands with. You said the bitch with 18 tattoos on her hands. I have five tattoos <laughs> on my hands. <laughs> so why you sound so... Because I was there when you got your back tattooed and you were causing an actual scene in the tattoo oh, parlor. Oh, I'm going to cause even, probably even a bigger scene. But and getting your hand, hands hurt. Well, you never got your spine hurt, spine tattooed, so you don't know how much it hurts compared That's, to tattoo. I have a very small tattoo on my spine. Yeah, but not your... And mine is my, down my entire back. But like you said, ever, you said you, earlier, you said never. I <laughs> certainly have a very small tattoo on my spine. Also, it's literally at the top of your neck. My, my spine, Mom. My spine is my spine is my spine is my spine. Oh, so you have like a fucking circle and a triangle or something like that. What is it? It stands for fellowship, service, and unity. And what is that? Umoja? Is, is that some like some some some, some quantum tradition I don't know about? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, <laughs> it's the day after Umaja. <laughs> Umoja. <laughs> so I want to get that because you know honestly the sponges clearly a very big part of You're my getting life. a sponge? No, I'm getting bubbles. It's signifies sponges. I'm gonna get bub like a bubble trail. Georgia has bubbles. Does she? Oh yeah, yeah she does. Or have like bubbles. all of her neck. 
Okay, so, you, so, you're, jo- so you're jocking towards your style. Continue. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get it uh, going up my hand, like probably to like about my elbow moment, like a huge trail of bubbles and with like green and blue like swerves. And shit. That's hood. It's very hood. You about to look hood as hell. Oh, but also. Also, I don't think ugh. you realize that uh, on the, the uh, on the highly melanated, as uh, what's it like to say? Blue and green and no, red. No, 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 honey, that's the wrong. Blue, greens, and reds are the colors that do show up on black folk. The guy that we were going to in Atlanta, Maya Bailey, who is, is check out Maya Bailey on Instagram. His tattooing is like, he's like one of the deal tattoo artists in the world, and um, he specializes in color on maybe black. You're, folk. Maybe you're black. I'm black, black. I would say <laughs> you're, you're uh, Obama black. I'm 12 years of <laughs> slave black. Okay. No. Oh, you are oh, you, oh, you, oh, a patsy? Who's it, Patsy? It's Twelve Years a Slave. Oh, Lupita I haven't seen Moon in, in, in a long time. Yeah, Lupi. I'm I'm like Lupita's darker than I am, but I'm yeah. dark. You are very. Dark. I'm like one of the darkest people you know, probably. That's not true. If you name three people darker than me right now, Jaslyn, who is Todrick Dancer, the one with the blue hair, you know okay, Jaslyn. Jaslyn, um, Charmaine, who is you just saying names. <laughs> Charmaine, my cousin from uh, Best Stuy and you, have, Erica, I, uh, who uh, work at the front desk here at YouTube Studios. I do have a, a, a friend named Charmaine, uh, and my my cousin Nadia, who is very dark as well. Bob, you, first of all, I, I, you, it's like you think like I've never met black. people. I know a lot of black people. I mean, well, you every... went to an Ivy League school. I don't know your life. So, were there a lot of black folks at your Ivy League school where you were Ivy League educated about that bass clef life? <laughs> music <laughs> equals bass clef life. I, Does your tattoo mean music yeah. equals bass clef life? Just music equals life. The bass clef is just like a little, little decoration. But it reads as music equals bass clef. Life. That is not true. You're the only person who's ever said that. But look at it. I mean, hold it out. It says music equals, and there's a bass clef, bass clef, and then it says life. Bob, but the, you, no one reads it like that. You, I, are, I should go over my tattoos that I have real quick since we're doing tattoos. Uh-huh. I have Butch Queen on the back of my hands. <laughs> I have eyelashes and eyebrows on my hands. And here. when you first got that tattoo, you do this to you would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're so fucking um, weird. I have a dead fish tattoo because you got because of fucking what's the name? <laughs> Bless you. Bless. Thank you. Um, it was a Kesha and Big, Big Frida. We got we got the matching. Eyes who I is. I have hard eyes. Hard eyes. Uh, from Drag Race. That's what they tell you on Drag Race when you. And little anecdote: when I went to go film Drag Race, and you know they tell you hard eyes so that you save all conversations for camera. You know, Pearl, the cameras are rolling. That's when you talk. <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the PAs, they're the very, um, like the head PA, her name is Ellen. Ellen, shout out Ellen. And shout out Ellen, who runs Drag Race, I mean, who runs uh, DragCon. She was saying Bob was the hardest person they have ever had to ice on set. He was like, Bob, they'd be like, hard ice, and Bob would just keep on talking. And it was like, hard ice, ladies, hard ice. Let's talk. And Bob would just talk and talk and talk and talk. You were in history, the hardest person they've ever had to hard ice. On I have Drag a lot Race. to talk about. We know, you won't shut up. I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> anyway, then I have uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Carol Channing. Also, my worst tattoo, which is kind of ironic, <laughs> on my arm it says, it's okay to make mistakes, and it's a horrible tattoo. You can't even read it. You it's can't like, read it at It all. looks like it's okay to make rectangle. Um, <laughs> I have this fellowship service in Unity. I have two dates on my back. I have... Uh, oh, my God. You have a lot of tattoos. I have... Uh, I get I get up out of bed. I put on my clothes. I got bills to pay on my chest. When you got that, people are like, what is this bitch doing? And I have uh, a duck on my duck. In honor of Jinx Monsoon. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're getting ducks in order of uh, Tat- I was always I was always afraid to get tattoos. I was like, uh, tattoos hurt. And I still am oh, afraid of tattoos. Monet, the transition, Monet! Monet, I gotta give you props. That was a good transition. <laughs> the subject is fear, and Monet was Monet. That transition. Get your ass off of me. Oh shit, Mo you with the are transition. So extra. I'm giving you props. Mo with the transition. Today's topic. <laughs> Am I topic, transitioning? <laughs> to, hey, Jesus Christ. Today's topic is uh, fears. We were talking about fears. Um, what is the scariest thing you've ever done? I mean, what, what, what else, maybe the scariest thing that's ever happened to me, maybe? It happened to me, yeah. What have I ever just been like truly terrified? I think maybe, I don't know, I can't remember being truly like, this is so scary. I don't think that I can make it through this. I, I've never been in a serious car accident. I've never broken a bone. I've never been hospitalized. Same. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a gun that wasn't on a police officer. Mm-hmm. I've never been abducted by the Mexican cartel. I I wasn't, you know, I don't, I've, I feel like I's inviting it. I'm like, I'm like, nothing's happening. Like, I'm going to, like, something. Like, well, I'm going to leave you here. Knock wood. Yeah, knock on, yeah. <laughs> just just, 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 just,
Um, the scariest thing besides that, we, we talked about before, about that time I went to go hook up a train in the Bronx, and um, I got off the elevator. And oh, yeah, was, that was pretty, yeah. That was scary. Well, uh, I'll tell you, when I got when I got uh, my grinder trade, robbed me. Right. That was pretty scary. Yeah? But I was also angry. I was so mad. Were you mad that you didn't? That I didn't get revenge? Yeah. I wanted to break something in in, in that room. I wanted right. to break a computer or something. A bitch, then I would have put you in some real hot water. Probably. They well, probably would have beat me up. Well, there, was, there, was, there was like five of them. <laughs> um, one time, though, when I first started drag, and also really quick, people love to like be like, oh, draggers, because they don't know what it is to struggle and da 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 Bitch, when I used to work, before I started driving my car to gigs, I would take the, the train home after Saliva Tuesdays, which ended at 4 o'clock, but then we'd go eat at the diner until 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, saliva Wednesday morning. So, exactly. So, I'll get on the train at, like, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and that is a dangerous sign to ride the subway. Well, I think a lot of people think that drag race girls don't struggle. Most most drag race girls w- lived the life of a local queen before they became drag race exactly. queens, with the exception of, like, Shangela, who has always been a drag race girl, right. and Valentina, who has always, always been, been a drag, drag race girl. No, she says that, but there's that whole... If that was debunked that Valentina she was, was two years. Valentina, like, did a... I think Valentina was a fair-weather queen uh, doing drag every couple of months until she got on Drag Race. Probably. And Vivian Panay. Vivian Panay. Vivian Panay was like, I'm a New York City queen. Bitch, like, we ain't, ain't seen see her ass nowhere. And ain't seen her since. <laughs> She got a job like working at like Disney as like a head makeup artist or something. Oh, well, that's fair. Yeah, good for her. Um, good for her. One of my serious stories. I had um, again. I've grown I've grown up in New York City. I've never been mugged or anything like that. But then this one time, I got on the train, got on um, got on the train from the club in full geesh, and I had my satchel and I fell asleep on the on the train. Just so you know, when you're on the train at that time in the morning, it's maybe you and one other drunk guy sitting in the corner, and it's, you, you're on opposite ends because you you don't want him to wake up out of his sleep and try to fucking stab you or some shit. So I'm on the train, doze off a little bit, and then it was first time. Have you ever been on a train and just your body just wakes up when it's close to your stop? Yep. It's like, yeah, your body's like it's time, it's time to wake up, girl. That girl, is girl, the get weird, up. that is the weirdest thing. Even though like oh, delays and delays and delays, totally. when you stop your wrist, like, your body's like here we are. But also, train sleep is the worst sleep. It's the you best wake, sleep. No, you wake up in a panic every time. No, you, uh, you're like oh this is my stop, this is my stop, this is my stop. No, it's not my stop. That's because you're not a real New Yorker. Oh, it's not my stop. 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 And so I got and I woke up and then as I woke up, this guy was standing in front of me and I'm like. So I'm like looking at him like, what's going on? And he's like, what's in your bag? He was, was standing? Like he was he like was, obsessed? What? He, he, stand, he was standing? We stand a sleepy queen. <laughs> That's not even funny. <laughs> anyway, he <laughs> was... <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Mitch laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he was standing in front of me. And then um, he was like, what's in your bag? I was like, nothing. And he's How like, old were you? I was starting with saliva, so I was maybe like 21, 22. Work. And he was like, I want to get back. I'm like, nothing. He's like, you sure? I was like, so fully in my head, in my back, I had my la- I had, I had had my laptop. I had, because I, I, my phone broke, so I was using, I had to give Thorgy my laptop to play my That is saliva. some crunchy. <laughs> but, but y'all don't realize that you, the saliva to this part where you show up and you would give them your iPod. Yeah. Everyone play. would like hand the DJ an iPod. So he had like When they walks up with a, two, with a 1999 <laughs> MacBook desktop. <laughs> Let me plug in my CPU. <laughs> I had to play. That's how I had to play my music. I wish I had no money. So I was like, we're going to use my computer today. I have my computer in there. I have my wallet. I had all that stuff. And I was like, I was like, I have nothing. And he's like, he's like, where you coming from? And I was of course, just give me a full interview. Mind your bitch. Was it by, you, you two by yourself? It was just, uh, just us by ourselves. Could no you have dark. taken him? He was taller than me. But if I had to, I would have fought. But I was like, I don't want to fight for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Listen, fighting, I was, uh, one time I was leaving the fucking, this area, and then this cab driver, I, I upset him because he was arguing with my cab driver. And I said to my cab driver, do not argue with her. <laughs> and then he didn't like being called a her. So then he, he looked at me and goes, you want to fight? And I said, <laughs> like, and I said, physically fight you? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, you want to fight? I said, that would ruin my day. <laughs> that would ruin my month. If I got out of this cab and got into a physical, even though I, I'm pretty sure I could take you, that would ruin my whole month. Yeah. Getting into a fist fight with you. So, no, I don't want to fight you. Yeah, so, so then he answered the question, and he's like, let me see what's in your bag. So, I just reached in, and I, t- I just pulled out my debit card, and he I just was like, his- <laughs> 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 Oh, my God. Got one of these. And you're like, oh, oh, oh I forgot this. So, he had a hoodie on, and he had his hands in his hoodie. Damn, no like he had, I, he, I know he probably did it, but, like, he had some type of weapon. So, I just reached in my bag, and I handed him my debit card, and I was like, this is all I have. And he took it. And then, as soon as I got off the train, I just called Chase and canceled it. 
you weren't. So, but that was that was uh, that was a scary moment. I was like, what if he has a gun? He's like, shoots me in this train car. I'm like, I've heard crazier stories in New York City. I would just be like, my brother, that's got to be something better. To like, it's just, it, it, it ain't, wor- it's not worth it. You shoot me on this train. You're not gonna make it far. You're shooting on a train. <laughs> like, you're not gonna make it far, Mary Mac. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is one of your greatest fears? Oh, well, my biggest fear is dying alone. Really? I tell people I do not like the idea. I'm gonna die in my apartment. No one's gonna find me for a month. There's gonna be a smell. <laughs> that's a very New York City thing. That I feel. I feel like that's. Oh, I, I wrote this down by the way. Did you hear about the way? He said I'm not a New Yorker. You know about the way they say are the four ways to be a New Yorker. What? They say. Tell me if you agree. That you have to be born here. Mm-hmm. You have to be mugged. Uh huh. <laughs> you have to live here for ten years. Uh huh. You have to get hit by a cab. Yes. And if you if one of those four things happens, you are a New Yorker. <laughs> so I am a New Yorker. Which one? Oh, you lived for 10 years. I lived for 10 years. And I, apparently if you get hit by a cab on your 10-year anniversary, you, you're you the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, that, is, is that how de Blasio got his ass there, girl? <laughs> Trash. Oh, read de Blasio. <laughs> By the way, the, camp, the, the political campaigns right now are getting ridiculous. The, the campaign I was watching today was like, why is de Blasio the worst? And one of the things was like, de Blasio can't even handle six inches of snow. <laughs> this is a real campaign. Oh, girl, that, the first snowfall of two thousand. Of the, of the 2018-2019 uh, winter, the sh- I mean, the city was basically shut down. But like, I was just gagged at this possible? campaign that was like, why is de Blasio the worst? De Blasio can't even handle six inches of snow. And, and, and there was somebody like, six inches, dot, 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 of snow. Of snow. <laughs> um, um, one of my greatest fears, I used to be afraid of heights, but I don't think I am anymore. No, you, you got your voice pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think I, I usually, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of heights anymore. I don't know what my greatest fear is. I'm not afraid of dying alone. I actually I like being alone. Do you do you think you like di- do you think you want to die alone? I don't I'm, I'm, I don't want to die alone, but I'm but you but you don't like being alone. Period. I'm not crazy. You about being always alone. have people around you. Yeah, but I think people just like being around me. I don't think that's true. Well, I'm not forcing anyone. I, I I there's a there's a <laughs> saying in my friend group that is very famous. Uh, words for me, which is you, you are not, not a prisoner, prisoner in my home. <laughs> like you don't have to be around me. <laughs> No one ever has to be ra- It is very famous. You are not a prisoner in my company. <laughs> Take your ass home. <laughs> Bye, Mary. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I have a greatest. I, I mean, obviously, everyone has a big fear. I don't know what mine is anymore. Can I throw bugs on you? I'm not afraid of bugs. Would you let a roach crawl in your mouth? No, okay, that's, not, that's just I'm gross. just asking, would you let a roach crawl in your mouth? No, but not because I'm a scared. I'm afraid of roach. It's just gross. But I could cover you. Would you be covered in roaches for? I, w- I always said I would have loved to do like a Fair Factor challenge on Drag Race where we like have to eat shit or like do like a bug thing. Like and, like you know, did you did you watch Fair Factor back in the yes. day? Yes. I would love a Drag Race challenge like that. That would be so. It's so different. I'll, it'll be fears. You, you like, hate bugs. We did a podcast, no, I don't bitch. Like bugs. Literally the tiniest spider. You that were was not navy. there. You described it to me. I said it was the size of a nickel. That is tiny. That's a big spider. A Monday. nickel? Bob, that's... Yeah, five cent. That is sm- that is very tiny. What? Maybe you grew up with roaches and spiders. <laughs> and you were like, oh, you grew up in the country, buddies. bitch. I did not grow up in the country. I grew up in cities. I grew up in Columbus, Georgia, and Atlanta, Georgia, but also Corinth, Mississippi, and Phoenix, and Alabama. Which Thank you. Not, which uh, is the country. And LaGrange, Georgia, which is kind of the country. <laughs> um... But yeah, I, I I mean, you would you would do a photo shoot where you were covered in roaches. I think it would be fuck yes, it'll be dope, it'll be fierce. Ah, ah, you wouldn't do it like Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Yes! Those are the ones they always have on Fear Factor. Uh, uh, yeah, or in Top Model. That, remember when when it's when they the stoned the roaches, which seemed <laughs> that was extra. Everything. Tyra Banks, <laughs> you stoning roaches, mama? We out here Did stoning you stone those roaches. <laughs> <laughs> we out here stoning roaches, mama. We out here stoning roaches. What's problem? That was everything. Um, what can I tell you? One of my favorite scary movies what? is The Strangers. No, it's not a good movie. Because excuse me, no, I'm not gonna finish, bitch. The the Stranger is one of the greatest scary movies ever. Not the new one, the original one, The Strangers. I I almost saw the new one. The one with um, what's the name? Liz. What's the name? Taylor. Not not Liz. Is it Liz? Born. Taylor. Liz Tyler. Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Tyler. Liv Tyler. Liv. Thank you, Patty. Oh, Stephen Tyler's daughter. Yeah, (laughs) she's in a restaurant. She's getting spooky. I used to hide. I used to work at a haunted restaurant where I was a butler. It was, well, that is shady and racist. Oh, I don't, it, I, I don't think it was. I don't think there's also, there's nothing wrong with uh, the profession of there's being nothing. a butler. Uh, shout out the movie The Butler. Shout out Forrest Whitaker. Um, shout out Oprah. Um, Oprah listens to this podcast. Oh, Oprah's a huge fan. Oh, she's... she's That's sweet. not a fat joke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
but but Liv Tyler used to come into uh, with her with her son who was obsessed with like macabre and like spooky and scary mm. stuff. But the reason why I don't like that movie is because they're killing or f- hurting for no. Spoiler what? alert! I'm gonna what? give you three seconds. Thank Fast you. Fast forward. Um, the reason why it is annoying is because when in the end they ask why are you doing this, they go, because you're home. Because here's the thing, that's why it's scary, because that is such a real thing. Bob, you know what? First of all, are you people that is a people like sociopaths kill people just to kill people. Okay, I also want to put out there there is a stigma against people with uh Disorders like so, like sociopaths and psychopaths. Mm-hmm. Not all sociopaths are dangerous. I'm not saying. In that. fact, most sociopaths aren't dangerous. I didn't say that. And but yeah. people are mean to like people are mean to like you're a sociopath or whatever. But if you are a sociopath, it is a mental disorder. You're making yeah. fun of someone, but people think it's okay to be mean to sociopaths. No, no, no. I'm just talking about because I was put you on the view lately. But there is a stigma out there against. Oh, sociopaths. absolutely, very that. And it's like girl, it's like girl. That's how they were born. They can't help it. They're just sociopaths. Now, now, now they're saying that Jesse Smollett might be a sociopath. She's a lot of stuff. And can you please stop acting like he's French? But Small, he's not from Paris. Small yeah, yes it is. I don't think he's not from Paris, Small but yeah. that is the root of that that is where the but, that's where the But he don't, I don't think he says Small yeah. Uh, yes he does. How you know? You don't know him? You don't know him either. Yeah. Apparently no one knows him. <laughs> Can you uh, look up how Jesse? Uh, we're looking up how Jesse. Sm- I say it's Small it. It's Small yeah. By the way, it's Jesse doesn't isn't even a name. You are you cannot you are destroying this man's name. You can't tell him well, how his I name. I think Jesse destroyed a lot more than his name. He's the one who destroyed his name. Honey. Have you ever heard of um that um that 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 girl? Her name is um Ladasha, and it's spelled L E dash. I heard about it, but I ain't never seen this hoe. <laughs> She'd be famous by now. All right, Jesse Smollett. Smollett. It's, 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 don't worry, it's coming. Jesse Smollett. Okay, this bitch on YouTube, that's how you pronounce but it. If, Who knows the but fuck if she would have said it your way, you'd have been like, that's it? No, I wouldn't have. But you just, you literally just clicked on a, some bitch on YouTube. Also, about some, find, somebody, find somebody talking about Justin's name. Oh, not, how about his family or him? His name is not Small Yeah. Yes, it is Small What is that based off of? That is, that's how you pronounce it in But that, if that man say my name is Justin Smollett, his name is Justin Well, if Smollett. he says that, then I'll go for it. Smollett. She oh, people say shit wrong. Monet, all the I could get a thousand people no, to say Smollett. I said get and him. And you will or still his, be like, no. Get him or one of his family members. You don't say Robbie. What's her name? Robinson. What's her name? <laughs> what's her name? Rob, something? Robbie Turner. <laughs> Robin Roberts. Was it? Robin Roberts. You don't think Robin Roberts did her research to find out how Jesse Smollett okay, first of all, um, Do you watch Good Morning America? No. This bitch butcher is the ABC. So you, so you think that uh, she's a bitch? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Anyway, wait. Well, can we agree that his name is probably pronounced Smollett? No, I say Smollett. I mean, how many people do I have to get to say Smollett before you say a Smollett? But also, you're saying Smollett, and it's Smollett. That's that's a different word. S M L L. First of all, when you have two L's together, honey, it goes. It comes. Yeah, alive. in French, we are in France. Well, that is a French. He is word. from Chicago. That is a French name. <laughs> Justin Smollett is from Chicago. But what the name probably comes from is that he was owned by 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 French by his family owned by and he, French. And you trying to make him uh, subject to his sl- French slave if owners? If he wants to use that pronunciation, that's his prerogative. That's not you for you to decide. He's not using How that. How do you know that? But <laughs> Monet, if his name was pronounced Jesse Smollett, Rob. Okay, not Smollett. Smollett. <laughs> if that's how his name was pronounced, I think Miss Robinson would have pronounced it Robin that way. Robin Roberts, you just Rob- you, you, I don't you, know you, you make it up shit for her too. We have to move on because you're being ridiculous. His name is not Smollett. Anyway, so the train is my favorite scary movie. What's your Jose Smollett. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite movie is uh, movie. my favorite scary movie is uh, what's the one where the clap game, the quiet place, the Conjuring. I've never seen The Conjuring. Ooh, Mary, The Conjuring is the on, the only scary. Conjuring 1. Don't fuck with Conjuring 2. She all right, but she ain't all that. The Conjuring 1 is one of the best films of all time. Word. It is it is truly scary, and it shakes you up. I've never seen it. It's, the story is this, um, this, this family moves into this house. The house is haunted. They bring in these... People who are uh, not poltergeists, uh, exorcists or not exorcists, ghost hunters. Basically, they bring these ghost hunters, and the ghost hunters are trying to find the ghost in the house. And it is, oh man, it fucked me up. Can I tell you one of the one of the movies of the highest turnover? Can you Google the uh, 
the um, highest grossing. No, the what was that movie? Paranormal Activity. The oh, that budget, was a good movie. The first one was Google the budget and Google how much they made. Oh, ten dollars. What do you think? Just get, I know. I think I know. I how, think that the let's find out how much they like made. Maybe maybe the budget is maybe like a million bucks. But I'm sure they. The, the paranormal the paranormal activity was a viral success. You think it was now? I'm gonna turn now. If you think it was a million bucks, you about to fuck. Eleven thousand dollars. And how much did they make? They filmed that shit on GoPros and fucking. You remember the flip, the flip camera, back in the day. That's so. And it made millions. Well, because it was a viral movie. I, I am. It's it was that is like eight hundred ninety million dollars. Holy shit! Now, by the way, that eleven thousand dollars includes advertising. Work. Because the budget, the biggest chunk of budget is often advertising and talent. People don't realize that it's a huge part in these big, big Hollywood films. Because if you want... The $11,890 big... million, dollars, that's fierce. Can, can we... you imagine? Can we make a, a, a movie? I, I mean, I want to. We... Bitch, that movie caused less than, than my music, music video. <laughs> Me too. Bitch, yet another dig. I'm not afraid to say... Is it shady to say how much you pay for your I videos? I think it's shady. You shouldn't. Because other girls... Dude, I don't think you should say it. It was more than eleven thousand dollars. Say their names. <laughs> what? Say what their names. I mean, you also fully just said that it cost that your more. music video cost. Well, we didn't say the exact number. Yeah, it's somewhere yeah, between but, somewhere yeah. between eleven thousand dollars and one million dollars. <laughs> and um, I just also can we have a brief discussion, uh, even though it's not about fear, and we are about to get into our segue. I think it's very shady. A lot of people have been wanting to have their music videos done by these very popular people who do music videos, but they don't want to pay their directors what they consider a fair rate, which is Uh, actually equal to or less than what some of these girls get paid to do one gig. gig. And then the director has to work on your video for a month solid, like a solid month of work. Mm -hmm. They have to produce it. This, that, the other, edit it. When you when you go and skip around and do your gigs, they're back there uh, editing, calling up the editor, doing all this shit, and they're like, I'm not paying them that much money. Like, girl, you need to pay these people to work for you. Yeah. That shit drives me crazy. And people are trying to not pay Those this. girls say their names. Say, th- I'm just, that's too shady. No, Some say it! Some of them are your friends, Mary. Okay, well, let, let, let them know! But I'm not, I'm not, because the only reason why. Bob is, Bob is pussy as hell. He oh, want to say that motherfucker. It's, it's on the chair. The buttons on the chair. Oh, I was it's like, like on the arm. The reason why Eureka, I th- you <laughs> the reason why I think <laughs> you found it. The reason why I think it's shady to say the name is because it's it's not it's not my drama. It's, it's their drama and the, this director that whatever director they have. But they do it. They do it to designers too because designers are like, well, this is what it costs to the fabric, mm-hmm. but then also this is what it costs to make it, but also mm. I'm charging you to design it. The designer one is a little tricky for me because I personally worked with people before Drag Race and it was one thing and the one I went after Drag Race through the same thing, it all it just became But that's not fair. What about people that worked with you before Drag Race? What, then all of a, what about people that worked with you before Drag Race? What do, but that's different. Oh, but then it's a whole different thing because you because you're that, worth more okay, now. Okay, we we'll, 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 we'll go back to, to we'll the talk directors. about it on a, on a later podcast. Yeah, but with the directors, I think that people need to be paid, especially as we get more popular. These directors are also getting more popular, so their rates go up with our rates. You have to pay people to work with you, or people are not gonna want to work with you. I agree. So you know who you are, and don't do that. Well, you're assuming that these bitches got cable. You know, if, if they're paying directly, we're on cable. Pay, yes, oh, public access, girl. Shit, we on HGTV. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one of the biggest well I don't know how I grew up can we check how much Bird Box made but Bird Box is like was a viral scary movie okay Bur- Okay, I had to there was a it's on Netflix they don't release their number oh yeah Netflix really not, oh you didn't know this oh you don't know this oh she doesn't know the words Netflix doesn't release their number. listen they do they keep their numbers so that you cannot negotiate a better price on the next season of your show they did this shit to the girls of Orange is the New Black the girls like they're like we think our show's popular and they're and it was like we assume really? maybe it is maybe it's not they don't release their numbers to anyone it's secret lock and key you will probably find out who won the Oscars before you find out who what the numbers are and, it, and it's and I think I'm assuming it is so that the people who are on the shows cannot negotiate higher, higher rates right I mean so they have to just you base cannot it off deny of, that by season one and two Orange is the New Black was probably Netflix's most successful show yeah but they're probably hiding how successful it is so yeah. you can't use that as leverage isn't that shady that's so shady oh unless God, Netflix, Netflix wants me then I love Netflix. <laughs> Fuck YouTube. Yeah. I love Netflix. 
<laughs> Don't say fuck YouTube. YouTube is a very nice guy. I'm kind joking. To us. I'm, I love YouTube. That was just so, that was Bob saying that, that YouTube. That, that, I love that, you guys. That was a Monet. <laughs> My name is Macaroni and Cheese. <laughs> uh, speaking of bird box, uh, um, we did a bird box makeup challenge. Yeah, so, that was very interesting. So to describe this, uh, what Monet and I did was we had two of our dear friends, uh, Pixie Aventura, Pixie Aventura and Marty Gold Cummings, who are two New York City nightlife legends. Okay, well, well not legends, legends, but they're nightlife legends. stars. Yes, yeah, stars. They're they nightlife stars. Not legends. Girl. They're stars. Wow. Wow, we're going to take away their status, Monet, <laughs> so quickly. Um, Pixie Aventura, who is a multiple award-winning artist, mm-hmm. and uh, Ma- Marty Gold Cummins, who is the current entertainer of the year in New York City. Yes. They came in, we were blindfolded ourselves, and then we tried to do their makeup. Their makeup. And, yeah, it was... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all about to find out that uh, we picked two of the drag queens with the strongest personalities <laughs> in the world, probably. I mean, who has a stronger personality than fucking Pixie and fucking Marty? Who is Marty. Marty, who is literally nervous about everything, and Pixie, who is jealous Marty of the sun for a... being the, not being the wind. <laughs> Marty is so extra, dude. That fucking jelly. One time we were doing the show, The Help, and this guy came in. Like me and Pixie were both on stage performing, and this guy came and tipped me, and he didn't tip Pixie. And girl, hi. World oh. War Z. Girl, girl. <laughs> so if you guys want to watch our um, Bird Box Makeup Challenge, click the uh, the link below. The link below. Um, it's in the description. Now, oftentimes people say that fear is healthy. I do think fear is healthy. I but just like anything in excess. Too much fear is not good for you. Do you know? Can you look this up? Like Marty's someone who I feel like Marty. Oh, Marty's is, afraid. Uh, he uh, he he operates in fear. Marty's afraid of tomorrow because it's not today. Like he's afraid. Of everything. <laughs> can you look up this. There's a fear. There's a fear of holes. Can you look oh. this up? Oh, girl, there's a, there's a phobia for everything under the no, sun. No, but it's a fear of like. So th- there's this thing where people see a bunch of holes, and it makes them uncomfortable. Yeah, because it looks and like sores. Be- no, it's because that is the way a lot of poisonous. It's, Tripophobia. Yeah. It's because a lot of stuff that's poisonous looks like that. So our brains are wired to be weary of things that look. Can you look up tripophobia? Is that why? Look, it's right there. Tripophobia and then type in hand. There's but it's you and it's also like like frogs. No, type no, go to images. There's there's like frogs and certain plants that look like that are poisonous to us. So our brains train us to be afraid of them. Hmm. Isn't that wild? But for everyone? I mean, it, it, it's in most people. Look at this. Does that, does, like, make one of those big. Like, people find this kind of stuff unsettling, and it actually makes some people's skin crawl, and it's because their brain is triggering them to be afraid of that. It's terrifying. I went through a I went through a phase where I was obsessed with phobias, and I learned the names of like over a hundred phobias. I don't remember them all now. I, 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 I was gonna say something shady, but that's gonna I'm not gonna say it. What? Nothing. Say so, oh, but yeah. I mean, so I, there, there was a point where I could name kind of hot. Like name a phobia and I'll, name a thing. I want a dick like that. Name a thing and I'll see if I can name the phobia. Um, I used to know like over I know, I can say the ones I know like um spiders. That's arachnophobia. All right. Um, height. Agoraphobia. Oh. Um. Black people. <laughs> Racophobia. <laughs> no, <laughs> Make America Great Again phobia. <laughs> um, Can I you, okay, really quick. And I was, anyway, colrophobia is the fear of clowns. Okay. Um, trees. Which you love. The fear of trees. I don't know that one. Hippopotamonstro sesquipedaleophobia is the fear of long words. Really? Yeah, and, it, and it's literally hippopotamonstro sesquipedaleophobia. Look at you. You always know random things that no one ever needs to know. random as hell. What were you about to say? I forgot. All right, thank you for joining us. <laughs> right well, what do you, 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 you didn't, you didn't, <laughs> yeah. Do you think that fear is healthy? Yes. Yeah. So, so what I was saying was the fear, these little fear of circles is to keep you healthy, is to keep you from things. Fear of fire is to keep you from burning yourself. Fear of heights is to keep you from falling to your death. Fear of clowns is to keep you from laughing. I think we're thinking <laughs> in, in like a bigger way, like. I I I mean like Mo, I told you to see I told I said Monet please put your phone on silent. Also, this is these are bill collectors. They literally call me daily. Pay your bills. You just won a hundred thousand no, dollars. It's not about. It's, it's like bitch. You got one hundred seventy five thousand dollars. And, for, and for, bill collectors are not for, calling me for Sally May. And bi- they're not calling me. Bill collectors aren't calling me. I I, I paid off my student loans. Well, well, when you had three dollars, that's easy. I have a literally. Hundreds of thousands. Did nobody tell you to go to an Ivy League school for music? <laughs> that was a bad idea to begin with. Excuse me. Let me no, take, I if, love you are, it. if you're watching at home or listening, a degree in the arts is not even worth the paper it's written on. And I'm gonna tell you that right is not now, true. It's uh-huh. that is not true. That's a different. That's a different for a different episode. One hundred. One hundred. That is not true. 100. Don't believe this bitch. One hundred. That is not true. One hundred. Anyway, um, I think we're thinking like a bigger, more, um, more into, more. Uh, um, 
extrinsic way? Like, in, in terms of, like, does fear help you grow and stuff like that? Not, like, literally, like, what it's preventing you from doing. Uh, you, know the, you know the number one fear in the world is public speaking. Is it? The nice thing I'm working in the world. See what I'm saying? So if, you, if you're afraid of public speaking, then you don't do it, then that's not helping you learn but how to public But it could be speak. a way of preventing yourself from embarrassing yourself in front of people in a social situation. So I think it is actually a... Fear is a way of preventing yourself from harm. But fear, fear can also prevent you from growing. And if you can, Agreed. If you're afraid, afraid of public speaking and you never do it, then you never overcome that fear. Or maybe you just never speak in public and, it's not your, and it doesn't matter. But I mean, you can't you're a politician live your life or, afraid of public speaking. Uh, you can. People, it's the number one fear in the world. You can, and people do it all the time. I say, but it's not. But as 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 it pertains to health, that's not healthy. I don't think a fear of public speaking is. If you are a politician, a fear of public speaking is probably really bad for you. Right. But I don't think that a fear of public speaking and you just and you work in accounting. If you're dead from accounting, why do you ever need to speak in the public? This is true. But I, um, well, again, I am. I'm, I'm, we're in professions where we have to public speak all the time. Yeah, I mean, and people... Were you, ever, were you ever afraid of hosting and shit? No, Maybe. I have loved... Let me try right now. There is nothing I love more than attention, standing in front of people, <laughs> people listening to me, people hearing me talk, everyone look at me, look, 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 hey, look, look. Are you looking? Look. Like, I love people paying attention to me. It were you ever never... bad at hosting and public speaking? No, I mean, I've had nights where, like... What do you mean? What do you? What do you? Like at the start of your career, where you, you, I tell you, you guys can Google my very ever first stand up comedy. I see it. It's funny. It's funny, but okay, that's the first one. But you all know sometimes performing goes like this. Like you, you started really good. Then like maybe the next two nights you were at Barracuda, it wasn't so. You know what I'm saying? I don't Are you know. asking me if I've ever bought, if I've ever not, not done bought, well? If I've I'm been like, afraid, I've never been afraid of it. Just because you started off really good, I'm saying. Whereas, so every time you 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 public spoke or hosted after that, it was it was, it was at that level. Are you asking? You're asking the question. Are you asking was I afraid or have I ever done worse? Than I, I changed did the, the time question. Before? I was like, were you always good at hosting and and public speaking? Is what, mm-hmm. what I was saying. I've always been good at. It. I've had nights where I wasn't as great as I was other times. You no know, one's literally better every single time they go on stage. I am. Literally no. <laughs> literally no. Ditto, bitch. Lit I I and I and I'm con- uh, saying that's not true, but I but I've always been good at um I've always been funny. I've always been good at getting a crowd to kind of do what I want them to do. Yeah. Or kind of, I mean, honestly, hosting a show is really about manipulating the audience. Very that. Into clapping when you want them to clap. Very that. Sighing when you want them to sigh. Very that. Cheering when you want them to cheer. Very that. Uh, it's about tricking them into wanting a little bit more than you're giving them. Like, if you, like you don't do the whole thing because you want them to, like, want more. Very that. I agree. So I've, I've always, and I'm also, um, I've, so basically I've always been good at manipulating people. Very, very Even young. at a very young age, I used to, like, manipulate my family into allowing, like, me and my mom would sit down, and I would have these, like, full-on, like, I would take, like, the sheets that you do like this, and I would do this whole, like, presentation on why we should be allowed to have um, an extra 30 minutes of uh, before bedtime. <laughs> and <laughs> oh it was, God. like, this whole thing. And my friends know that I so love— So you've always been extra? Always and forever, Alyssa Extras. <laughs> No. It didn't work, but I tried. Because <laughs> I'm not afraid to try things. <laughs> well, we got to touch on this already. So you're, so well, what I was trying to say is that by overcoming fear, the only way to get better at your fears is, I mean, the only way to overcome your fears is to try, like, if you're afraid of heights, the bitch, you need to go to, to go jump out of plane or something. Not literally. But why that, do you need but... to overcome a fear of heights? Like, what, what, what do you need to overcome agoraphobia? Because for? you never know. Let's say, Bob, um, we're in. You're in a situation where you have to, where you are challenged with heights, and you, you know, what I'm saying, like, you never know what the world is going to be. Okay, because you never know is not a good reason to do something. I think so. Then you'd literally be doing everything. You need to learn to cook because you never know. You need to save money because yes. you never know. You need to overcome yes. heights because you never know. Yes. You need to learn to sing because you never know. You got to okay, do that because you never. So I'm saying because you never know is not a good reason. But to do certain, okay, uh, you don't need to conquer every fear that you have, every single fear. But I think that overcoming fears is important for self growth and being a being a uh, um, a better human being for I yourself. I think if the fear is impairing your social life, then you need to overcome it. Not just but your social life, your life. Period. Your life. If if this fear is impairing your life, you need to overcome it. But I don't see how a fear of heights can okay, really Okay, not literally, ev- I, I just, I literally just said not every I just, single fear. All I did was took the one you said, heights. You and said, then I said that I didn't mean like every single fear, I mean like... But like I'm I said, very, if Deb from accounting is afraid of public speaking, she doesn't really need to overcome that unless she needs to public speak for something. But if Deb, if Deb from over account, uh, from... Uh, accounting? From, uh, <laughs> over accounting. If Deb from over, for, shit, if Deb from accounting... Someone's uh, afraid of speaking publicly here? <laughs> You know, I had a really bad speech impediment as a kid. 
I believe it. You still I was still. I was really bad, and my mom used to make me sit at the dinner the dining room table when I was a kid and read books to her. Like what books did you read? I mean Mind everything. I, re- I had to. <laughs> the one that I remember is Hitler's book. I was uh, that, that I hated. I just imagine that my mom was like read this. I had Come to, on, read this book. I had to read um, the Bluest Eye to her. I had to read that literally like eight times to her. Uh, I had a speech pattern when I was a kid too. Really? Yeah, I, I went to tell. I went to uh, speech classes. Did you really? Yes, I took speech for three years. My mom took it upon herself too. I mean, but it was like bad. I would be like, b- 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 like I, kids used to make fun of me so hard in school, and um, so she made me. I had to read to her every night at the table until it started to go away. And I learned it from my cousins. My cousins had really bad speech impediments, and because uh-huh. we used to hang out all the time, we used to play video games together literally every weekend. That's where I picked it up from. What I did was, I think up until third grade, from kindergarten from kindergarten until third grade, I had to go to speech class, which was basically... Kindergarten to third grade, that's really young. That's four years, yeah. Work. It was me and a bunch of kids who were ESL, and a couple of kids who stutter, and a couple of kids with, like, lisp. Like, just sitting in a room, like repeating what the teacher said to us like over and over. My issue was that I mumbled and I talked way too fast, which I still do, but I mean, I'm obviously intelligible because, I mean, I have a career. People aren't, people aren't in the audience going, what? And we we don't, don't see it. We put subtitles when you're on TV. And what about in real life? You, are you in front of the stage holding? Oh. Well, I have my Google Glass on, so I can, <laughs> it's literally transiting. As you you remember when Google tried to make Google Glass Girl, a thing? Oh, crunchy and ass And whenever you thing. see someone wearing Google Glass, you're, you're like, like you how are, do you, like, do you feel like you look stupid? Because you look <laughs> stupid. Also, YouTube is owned by Google, so maybe... I don't care. Google yeah. Glass is crunchy, and they knew it. That's why you don't see them on shelves anymore. Yeah, this there would no, it was a bad. And then people idea. would wear and be like, "Okay, Google Glass," and I was like, "Oh my." Well, now apparently you know they have like one coming out in like a contact version, like a contact. You put, put that shit in your eye if you want to. Put a Google. Contact. Be like them damn Samsung Galaxy does explode in your eye, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? You put a Google contact in your eye if you want to, <laughs> Miss Mary. Oh, did Jack. you hear about this? Patty, uh, from traveling folk, do you know the screens in the back of on the Delta, uh, Delta America, whatever? Don't they say have it. Little cameras. Don't in say that to me. They have little cameras, and there was a whole article about. It. I was How like, you know, there was a whole article about it, girl. But who, Rich, Rich, look but, it up. Who wrote the article? Craig, it was Craig, it, the it, conspiracy theorist. No, it was a. It was like New York Times. Or somebody put it out. I, I was. It came up on my face. Like I was like. The the little mon- the little button at the bottom of the screen that is a camera in there. You know, speaking of fear, you know, Facebook had this new thing, it was a crazy thing, where they would listen to you when you post statuses. Yep, United Delta, Air, uh-huh. But what is this website? BuzzFeed. Okay. And confirm that their premium economy screens have cameras. So only in the... In the, in the no, all of them. It says well, premium economy. And the new ones, the, the new ones that have, like, the black. So if you're in, like, Delta 1 or the best that lay down, they have cameras. Even in, sometimes in the regular seats. Well, this says premium economy. I'm just going off with BuzzFeed, which is a pretty reliable source. Of. Right. Unless, but, you're, unless you're Trump. Trump doesn't trust BuzzFeed because <laughs> they expose her. Um, exposate her? Exposate, exposate her. Um, I would say, you know, Facebook, they're the thing where you would type in a status, and then they would listen to your home to see if you were playing. They said it was to see if you were playing music, and then it would just put in the background, like, Patty was listening to uh, Bust Down Fatiana. Really? Yeah, it was like a whole thing. How can they access that, your microphone from your computer like that? You because when you every time they update, you be clicking OK without scrolling. They slip shit like that in there. When you just be clicking, sure, why not? Who's gonna read all that? Do you read all of it? All of no, it? I don't read it. But but someone out there obviously did because they caught them. They were like, "How do you know I was listening to Tatiana?" Well, do you have to do that thing where you like go look up red skirts on Amazon, bitch. For the next three days, your Facebook is littered with red skirts. Well, that's every because article. they... So the reason why Facebook doesn't have to charge you is because they're selling, selling right. your information. Right. How old you are. But, I mean, you can go in there and turn all that stuff off, but it's, there, it's so hard to do. People don't do it. Gag. That's why, that's why, yeah, red skirts show up in Facebook, then on Instagram, then on oh. Twitter. Red skirts start walking by you on the street. Someone <laughs> in a red skirt knocks your door. Hey, I heard you like red skirts. <laughs> Like shit, they be. Uh, fucking Jehovah's Witness. We heard you want some red skirts. Girls, yeah, have you, have we talked about the the, the, uh, the gospel of red skirts. <laughs> yeah, that is a, that honestly is a big fear of mine. Technology, because I mean, I feel like one day we are going to be in very um, Terminator uh, of the realness. Robocop gonna come get you. Ro- Robocop is not Terminator. No, nah, I, I switched to things. Also, Robocop is uh, was a human being who was turned right, into because of an accident because yeah. he got shot to death. Um, 
Did you ever see him being a Robocop? Of, of course. Like, the way they shot him up, you can't survive that. <laughs> it was like a big machine. It was like he was, <laughs> like he was Swiss cheese. <laughs> I was like, you can't come back from that. Y'all are too, you should have just done one shot. That would have been enough. It used to play on, did you watch the USA Network as a kid? Yes. Did, did you remember the Mortal Kombat cartoon that came on the, on the USA Network? No, but I watched Mortal Kombat movies. I love that. There those. was a Mortal Kombat cartoon. Does anyone in here know that? No, oh my God. Vince, can you look it up real quick? This is from my, it was a Mortal Kombat character cartoon. It had Raiden, Shang Tsung, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, Liu is Kang. It, I won't say who, because I think it's shady to say who, but someone we know um, is so afraid of blood and the mentioning of blood that he will just faint Find a hole, if you yeah. say Because I feel like if I say it, then there there's also a drag race girl, I won't say who, who is afraid of like, like loud noises, like not just like a little bit. Do like, I know her? Yes, you do it. She's she's yeah, but she's Say so her name. she I, right. I, because they'll well, start, you you been a real pussy no, today. That's not because the fans will start her. I'm not into exploiting people's I am fears. I'm kidding. So I don't want to tell, but people will start doing. I know how fans are, and I don't want to say who is afraid of. Um, but like if you say blood, if you mention blood, I know drawing who. blood. But I didn't have this experience. With the he'll just fall over and just be and just can't even com- like work. That's cr- I know. That's crazy. I mean, that's I mean, it's a chemical. I mean, it's 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 obviously. I'm just saying, I couldn't imagine living that way. So the name of the movie you're talking about is that Defenders of the Realm. Is that what you're? Mortal Kombat, Defenders of the Realm. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Who's mm-hmm. your favorite Mortal Kombat character? I don't know. That's a hard question. I love all of them. So I, I used to love Scorpion, Raiden. Raiden, like Raiden. Raiden all the way every time. Did the guy who played Raiden kill himself in the movie? He killed himself. In I think a, he killed in himself a, in, a, in I annihilation. Think it was auto asphyxiation. I'm not kidding. The guy who played Raven in the first Raiden oh, in the first movie. Oh, I thought you meant like in the. <laughs> no, the guy from the first Mortal Kombat movie killed himself through auto asphyxiation. Oh, I thought you were saying Raiden in the in the movie. I'm like, no, he did not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the character Raiden. No, um, but I was uh, also. This is. Uh, do you have a fear of losing? No. Or I, you do. I don't have a fear of losing. I arm wrestled a guy today who I was pretty sure would beat me. I don't wrestle Larry. I don't have a fear of losing. Just because I win frequently doesn't mean I'm afraid <laughs> Okay, of you don't win frequently, honey. I win more frequently than you do. I just won something. Yeah. So we're tied. One on one. We're not tied. We are one. You won Drag Race once. I won Drag we Race We discussed. Once. We, Monet, you said you didn't want to talk about this I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying, but... Well, you didn't win Drag Race. Okay. You won All Stars. All right, moving on. Exactly. Hey, don't bring it up if you don't want to talk about it, Mary Mac. Um, Miss Mary Mac. But what, what, what was I saying? The... Um, what was I just saying? About, um, I don't remember. Before I'm on a rude leader. Oh, um, me and uh, Jiggly Caliente have a standing, like, duel. We have a battle. I think C- Jiggly would destroy you. And see who's better at Mortal Kombat. What, like, is, what is that based off Jiggly, of? first of all, you play Gator Games once in blue. Jiggly plays all the time. You don't know what I do with my life. Bob, you d- I do know what you do with your life. My whole life? Have you guys seen the documentary? Do you, do you, wait, do you think you could be me in Mortal Kombat? Absolutely. So we have an, we have another anything you can do. You you sh- you are sure you can be more. A uh, thousand percent. One. I would. Let's so bet, if let's it, bet a thousand dollars, I will beat you in a round of Mortal Kombat. Is one round? Is two out of three? Is one round? One round. One round. One thousand dollars. Y'all see this? One thousand dollars. I will beat you. We in should a do, before we lose the answer. It should be one thousand dollars in charity. To no, I want your money. What a greedy, greedy. I will decide what I do with my money after I get it. All right. Well, you know I want. You, you know what. A thousand dollars. A thousand. I beat you in a round of Mortal Kombat. Great. Do you have Mortal Kombat? Yes, I have Mortal Kombat in my home. Do you have Mortal Kombat? No. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> it worked. You have Mortal Kombat? But I'm about to be over at Fred's house, fucking <laughs> train like Rocky Maivia, bitch. You are. You are. I. I. I am the Russian, and you are Apollo. Uh, you about to go down. I've never seen. I know what that even means. The Russian killed Apollo. Got it. And. What, what, what's this? Have you guys seen this documentary on Amazon Prime called Do You Trust This Computer? No. So basically what it is, it's like Elon Musk and like all the big tech. Who, by the way, Elon Musk is, I'm sure, a supervillain. Oh. Is like Snowden? Elon Musk is is like, what is a real life supervillain. I don't know that is. Elon Musk owns. Um, Tesla. He owns Tesla. He's like building rockets, sending them to SpaceX. the. Yeah, he, he's like, I think he's growing people. Like, I think Elon Musk is up to no good. He's too wealthy. He he's trying to get to the he's moon. Not, he's not the richest man in the world. He's not the richest man in the world. You don't have to be the richest man in the world to be dangerous. You you can have the you can be you can be the richest person on the block and still be dangerous. He's trying to get people to Mars. 
What was he? Why was he up to? Because this planet is literally falling apart. Well, Mar- <laughs> you know, but also just as a reminder, Mars is uninhabitable. So since well, this when planet- you got money, listen, when, when you got money, anything is inhabitable. What I'm saying is, this planet is uninhabitable. And Mars is uninhabitable. If this planet that we're on already becomes uninhabitable, it would be easier to make this planet to do whatever you were going to do to Mars to do it to Earth than it would be than it, to move everybody to Mars. Oh, we'll see. I don't know. I, oh, mean, I don't anyway, know. Um, so this this documentary, Do You Trust the Computer? is with Elon Musk and a bunch of other like tech people, and they basically talk about how the technology already exists for artificial intelligence to the point where we don't understand how it works. I mean, it's been contained, but like it just basically shows that um, the technology exists for artificial intelligence to learn on its own. That how- fucking how to how? What's his name? How from uh, Space Odyssey? I've never seen that movie. How how is the computer where they tell how how is like the first ever Siri, and you tell how what to do and how it makes your life easy, and then at one point uh, how starts going crazy. How's like I need to protect this ship, and then uh, they're like how you need to shut down, and how's like my job is to protect the ship, and you are a danger to the ship. What's the what's the line? I can't. Sorry, I can't do that. What's the famous how line? So how it turns with them? How's like you told me to protect the ship. I'm here to protect the ship. You're a threat to the ship. I gotta get rid of you. No, that, that that's like that that, that robot in um, Wally. Well, well, how well Space Odyssey was way before uh, Wally. I don't yeah, know it's basically it. that. But uh, Elon Musk is warning us. He's like, we coming for you. Yeah. He's scary. I'm afraid of him. I like him. Rich people are scary. So you scary. But years ago, my grandma said, "Don't ever be afraid of a broke black man from uh, from the hood. Be afraid of a rich white man from Washington." <laughs> she used to always say that. Those are the scariest. People in the world, because right. you can't stop them. Very that. Oh, it's scary. I, when I was in uh, college, I used to watch this movie, this a conspiracy theory movie called Zeitgeist. Oh my God, the Zeitgeist! They talk about how the how nine eleven was a whole this whole yeah, setup. Yeah, Zeitgeist talks about how yeah. religion is a hoax. Mm-hmm. Uh, the American financial institution is uh, designed to keep us in debt, uh-huh. and nine uh, eleven was an inside job. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm not 100 percent sold on nine eleven being an inside I job. I am. You you think one hundred percent, girl? Did you not see Zeitgeist? The I mean, the fucking proof is in jet the fuel cannot melt steel beams. <laughs> <laughs> Zeitgeist is great. Anyway, there were there were explosions in the building. In the building. I think that we talked a lot of, some good things about fear. I think I taught you some stuff. You taught me some stuff. And now we're not afraid anymore. I am not afraid of anything. Will you go skydive with me? Oh yes! Oh my you god! Can we do that? Crazy. You don't want to do it? I don't want to, but I will do it. Oh my god! And we get on um, GoPros and we skydive with GoPros. Yeah. That would be so fun. Mm, also, but here's the thing: I think we may need the weight limit. <laughs> it's like a weight limit to go. You definitely do, Monet. You are heavier than me. That is not true. Do you want to uh, bet this too? I got a skill at my house. No. Monet will never see exactly. Monet will never. That's Monet. I just don't want to. I don't want to share my weight, but I'm not afraid to share. I just don't want to show it. Monet, to you. you are heavier than I am. I don't think so. Because you told me your number before, and I was like, oh, I was shocked. I was shocked that I was a little, a little less than you. I promise you, you're heavier than me. Also, you could. That's because you went. You went on your on your, on your little Canadian tour. She done lost six pounds. Girl, you can't tell her shit. <laughs> mm. She lost six pounds. I'm Canada. also three inches taller than you. Right. But, so, I'm but, I'm still, but I'm still, but I still weigh less than you. I don't think so. You also think you're skinnier than me, which is absolutely insane. I am. What is that based off of? Looking. Monet, you're not skinnier well, than looking me. Looking at you, you are large. Day. You are a larger person than me. That is not true. You also think your hands are smaller than me. Monet, from the thigh to the ankle, you have a thankle. That is it's, not true. <laughs> you don't have a thankle, but you are bigger than me. You are not. Bobby, also, that your hands are smaller than mine. That is just not true. <laughs> it's not doing that. You, that is not true. Do you guys think Monet, is, am I crazy? Monet is not skinnier than me. I, we, don't even answer because it's, it's going to be it's gonna be a, a rough uh, awakening for Monet. I, um, but you're not skinnier than me. Okay. It's not true, but whatever. Monet, your website is called I Feel Skinny, not I Am Skinny. <laughs> Bitch, and so you think you you just think you thumbling over there. Well, compared to uh, you think that you are a Lupita Nyong'o, a, a waif of a woman. Uh, compared to you, yes, Annie. <laughs> compared to yes, Annie. Anyway, uh, this is a very healthy conversation about fear, and I think that we both learned some things. I think so, and I don't think I'm afraid of anything anymore ever. Oh my god, that is not healthy. Actually, what you don't know, we have, we. Don't even. You have nothing to say. Yes, you no. do. Bitch, can I do it? <laughs> you do not have a... You do not. Monet, first of all, do not play with me. You don't have anything over there. Wait. 
<laughs> Can you add it when you die? You are the you you are so bad at the action challenges <laughs> that I won. You, did you win? Well, Breast World, I was. Did you? You, you, you certainly didn't win Breast World. You said to me that I was that I was the best one in Breast World. You said that. To you me. just said you won it. Okay, but you saw you thought you thought I should have won. But that's not what we discussed. Did you win the other acting challenge? Did you oh, win Sex and the Kitty Girl? That's not that Samantha. So why did you say you won it when you didn't win it? You be saying the most random shit that don't make no sense. You be saying like it's do you know? Do you know what? Do you know what acting challenge I won? Motherfucking Pepsi. Okay, I'll, that's the acting challenge I won, bitch, and I won all the way to the bank. How, how did you? I don't even. I don't even know how to respond to some of the crazy shit you Just be say, saying. Oh, you did do a Pepsi commercial. That's very cool. Thank you. I know. Would you like to acknowledge things I've done now? <laughs> it's in a movie on Netflix. <laughs> the same Netflix you've been talking shit about for the past hour. <laughs> I think a full year movie. And the girl. TV show on Netflix. Can you tell them about it, please? <laughs> Can you even talk about it? Yeah, it's announced. Is it? Did. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen you post about it. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a show called Tales of the City on Netflix with Olympia Dukakis, Laura Linney, Ellen Page. Work. Um, uh, but I have not posted about it. I should post about it. I posted on yeah. Twitter. I was on Twitter. I did post. I like how you didn't even ask them to bring me on too. That's not how it works. It's not you nepotism. I don't go in and be like, my friend want to work you, here too. You should. That's what I do. But it's not Dave and Buster's. <laughs> I don't just walk in and say, my friend want a job. <laughs> I used to love Dave and Buster's. We have to go. We're out of time. Okay. I love you. Um, this is a great episode. I think so, too. Love you, sis. Bye. Bye, nigga. Oh, oh my God. Look. All, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to someone else. <laughs> all there's, the a dude, there's a guy behind you. Every white person is red at this point. <laughs> <laughs> there's an audible gasp in the room. Okay. Except Pat. Pat was like, I was kidding. Patty, well, that wasn't Pat. Patty's from Mississippi, so... <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you want to talk about something you want to be afraid of, motherfucker? I used to live in Mississippi. <laughs> hey, me. Listen, being gay and black in Mississippi. Oh, let me tell you. And a now. redhead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is I can like. I'm not trying to trash Mississippi, but I, I just can't imagine like live like being like I'm going to stay right here as a black gay person. I like I'm imagine, good and I'm staying. I can't imagine wanting to stay there as a person. <laughs> I mean, shout out Mississippi. My yeah. mom from Mississippi. My daddy <laughs> Alabama. Alabama. My, My mom, mom from Mississippi. Mississippi. You I mix that up. Negro with that Negro. Ain't no fucking women. All right, thank you. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. <laughs>